Welcome to Pinoy Bounce. This is the continue, continuation of the interview with Matthew Wright. We learned a lot about him in the first part. We learned about his life and he was getting into his career as well. But there's more to Matthew than what meets the eye. We're, we're, going, to look about, we're going to look about his future endeavors and also his mindset in playing you know, in that level, in that high level of basketball. Anything you'd like to add before we start part two, guys? Um, I mean, what I like the most about him was he took the challenges that was given to him. And uh, instead of it kind of bringing him down, he kind of went back to his why in terms of why he really wanted to do it. And I like that he mentioned about the bubble, you know. Uh, he, he really, is, he, he told us really saying that he's playing this because of his passion about the game of basketball. And that's the reason why he excelled at the bubble. He said most people that play basketball professionally, some of them are doing it for the fame, for the money to support them. Some of them are just, doing, you know, are just naturally good at it. But there's some people that are just passionate about the game and enjoy the game for itself. Or actually basic, ball is just, life. You know, and, and th- those are the people that excel because when there's nothing else to do in the bubble besides just play, eat, sleep, and play, People don't excel in that if their reason to play basketball was not it, just to play. The reason was to provide specifically. But for him, it was he lived for the game of basketball. And to have that opportunity to just do that, that's how he excelled. And that's why we saw him have an MVP kind of performance in the bubble because that's how you were able to kind of weed out all the people that are just doing it because they're doing it. But the people are doing it because they were born and they felt like this was their purpose and destiny to really play. I feel like he didn't sugarcoat you know, his journey, you know, going from from living in Etobicoke all the way to where he's at right now and everything in between it. You know, usually you'd see like, oh, kid from Etobicoke now to the PBA, but he he gives you the in-depth or he gives you like the like, you know, the darkness that he's had to deal with or like the kind of dark clouds that he had to, that was over his head and everything, how he managed to push through. So I'd, I'd have to agree with you on that, what really stood out the most. And, you know, the takeaways that he, he's gone into, like, you know, Getting cut from France and everything was probably a big one. So, just so, just to show that, like you know, for all his fame and all that he's you know had, you know, there's always like those bad side to it. So like that really really stood out to me when getting to know Matthew Wright. And with that said, let's get to know Matthew even more with this part two. What are some of the aspects of the game in the in the PBA or uh, in the league there that kind of came naturally to you, or which ones some of the ones that you actually had to grind yourself out and change? Maybe some of the aspects that you used to play or, or some of the skill set that you were used to but had to kind of adjust and change just because the way the league there is, like you mentioned, is very different than how it is here. Yeah, it's a different game. Um, I, you know, it's, it's, I was actually pleasantly surprised how skilled these guys were back, back home, though. There's some really good basketball players, man. Um, definitely guys who could definitely have played Division One and who can play in other leagues other than the PBA. There's a lot of talented guys, for sure. Um, but my, I felt like my skill set, tr- I translated very well into the PBA. I was a bigger, you know, I was a 6'4 shooting guard. So I was bigger than most of the wings that who, who were guarding me. Um, so I was able to just shoot over them. And, um, you know, one thing I definitely have to work on is my post game. I never had to post up anybody ever in, in Filipino leagues here or in Division One. But back home, there's a lot of short guys who are guarding me. They're quicker, you know, lower center of gravity. I'm not trying to run around and have them chase me all game anymore. So... I might just have to put a couple of pounds on and, and, and just, you know, post that ass up and, you know, <laughs> just, to save, just to save my legs. So that's that's a, a, something I definitely have to work on. But outside of basketball, I, I had to really learn how to let the media in and other fans because I was very private. I think before I even went to the Philippines, I had like 600 followers and I was, you know, yeah, at the time, like 600 followers and I was private. And you, you can't really do that in the PBA. You know, you have to be, open to the media, open to the fans and be more interactive with them. And that was something I had to definitely work on being a private person. Yeah. I, I saw, um, if you search your name on Facebook, there's a fan page. There's a Matthew Wright <laughs> fan page. Do, does he, do you even know that you have know a that? fan page? Do you, yeah, do you like yeah, meet my, and greets and I, stuff? Because my you, mom you do tells have a lot of fans. My mom tells me she's, uh, my mom's probably the, the one that <laughs> the created it. <laughs> yeah. How was that like for you? I mean, the, cause I know in the Philippines, they, they have that kind of uh, culture and religion with regards to like uh, they almost treat NBA players like celebrities there, and they and, you know and they they treat you like they follow you and then they make comments and and they want to take pictures of you. How was that transition like for you since you were a very private person? It was bizarre, man. Like the first time anyone asked for my picture at the mall, 
You know, it's, you, you, at first you just say, yeah, this is cool. Like, you know, you take a few pictures, you know, you smile and you think like, you know, you're happy that, you know, people recognize you and then they like you. And then it got to a point where it was just getting out of hand. Um, <laughs> like, you know, I couldn't even have a meal with my family somewhere, um, you know, at, a, in a, at the mall. So, um, and then, you know, I, was, I'll, I'll, I could have handled it a lot better. Um, I was a little bit more, you know, resentful. Um, not resentful, but more aggravated because, um, like, my private space was being taken away. But then I just had to realize that this is something I would have to work through and I have to, um, you know, become better at just for the sake of being, you know, for my likeness and, like, how I carry myself. And, um, you know, I don't want to care. I don't want to seem like I'm um, masung it or, um, you know, anything like that to the fans. So uh, I had, that was some, definitely something I had to change. Craziest fan story. Craziest thing that a fan's done for you, or Man, um, Philippines is like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know <laughs> Facebook. Like I don't know. Did a fan get a tattoo of you? Like uh, uh, what? Oh, did they go right. to your house and just like they saw you up? take photos? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, I've, I've been stalked before. That's not oh, that big of an issue. Um, uh, the, the police officer I got pulled over one time. Um, me and James, we were. Uh, um, I wouldn't say we're, we're in the most uh, best shape in driving, but <laughs> you know, we're still driving. And uh, we, <laughs> we, 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 we violated a few uh, rules on the road and um, we were getting pulled over and uh, we actually tried to make a break for it. Uh, I don't know what we were thinking. Like we we're going to be on some you know, cop shit, like <laughs> chase in Manila, uh, police chase in Manila. But uh, we tried to evade them. We got boxed in by a trike. Police came to our window and then they saw us. And um, I offered them some practice shorts. Uh, some <laughs> dirty, Give them your shorts. Did you sign it? Some, some dirty practice shorts. I didn't even sign it, but they saw who I was and I offered them that. Hopefully we can get out of it. And all that all they did was they asked us to get out of the car so they can take pictures and then they let us go. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, let's talk about... Just with the, with the culture now with police officers in, in, in North America, I, I just can't believe like we got away with that. Like I was just thinking to myself, I got pulled over by a Toronto police officer and I... I handed him some dirty basketball shorts. Oh, you're like, not going to get away with that. Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, so fast forward now to the PBA. How are you, um, I know the NBA is coping with like their with the with the bubble. How is it now with the PBA? Do like with the bubble there as well. I felt like it was a successful bubble for us. A successful bubble experience. Um, you know, they said that uh, there was no positive cases. So I'm going to take their word for it. Um, so uh, I think the next process is trying to get the vaccine into Manila soon enough, like around the time of um, around Easter, around Holy Week. I think we're going to start up the next season. So it's either going to be bubble format again or we're going to go back to, uh, you know, our three or four gyms in Manila. Uh, I'd rather have that format, to be honest. But if we have to do another bubble, then so be it. It's just tough to be away from your family again for another three months. Looking back at your recent run, you guys made team franchise history, right? All the way to the semifinals, all the way to the last game, almost. Did you did you uh, did you feel different in the bubble? Because uh, like you were you were the, noticed you as the bubble like MVP. Damon Lillard, or, yeah, you had a yeah. Damon Lillard so, performance in that bubble. <laughs> the the runner with the one the the, the shot. One runner? So oh how did you feel? You, gotta, you guys got to think of a name for that shot. I've been practicing. <laughs> It's actually a pretty comfortable shot. I'm going to start doing it in games more often. So uh, I'm, I'm, going to need, I'm going to need you guys to market it. And I'm, I'm trying to think of a name for that shot. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, to get back to your question, bu uh, the bubble was a, a place where you saw who the real hoopers were, like who really, truly loved the game. Because, um, you know, there's a lot of guys out there who are just good at basketball. There's a lot of guys who, who love the game because it brings them money or fame or um, you know, that kind of, they want to be called idol or they're just naturally good at it. They've been good at it their whole lives, but like there's people in there who truly genuinely love the game for what it is, just pure basketball fanatics. And, um, those are the ones that really came out and performed during the bubble because you have nothing else to do, but basketball, you don't have any distractions, no family, no girl, no child distractions physically in front of you at least. And it's, you know, you're just in a hotel, 
you're going to practice, you're eating, you're going to, you're taking a nap and you're going to your game after. That's all you do. So it's, it was like a basketball boot camp, almost like boarding school. So you truly had to love it to wake up every single day, motivated to do the same thing, eat the same food, see the same people. So for me, obviously I miss my family big time. I miss my son's first birthday, a second one. Um, you know, I missed countless birthdays. I miss my father's birthday. Um, you know, just moments that I wish I didn't, but you know, you have, as a, as a father, you have to provide for your family. This is the way I provide for my family. So, um, all in all, though, it was a great experience. And um, if I had to do it again, I would. Were you, were you um, satisfied with your performance? I know you got injured as well, right? Which, which could have affected your performance. And then you had the last game. Uh, are you say, are you, it's, is, is it glad to say that you left everything on the floor? Or um, the next season you're coming with a new you know, fire because Bouncing you made it up. this far, you know? Um, looking back at it, at that run. I'm not a real big... Um, advocate for for moral victories you know um especially at this level of basketball um the one thing i can take home with me and i can sleep well at night is knowing that we converted a lot of fans to become phoenix fuel master fans they they enjoyed the way that we played um you know with calvin abueb on my team as well so he's a big uh, magnet for fans but you know fans out in the philippines they've only been notoriously been cheering for like two or three teams now I feel like we're one of the teams that fans would like to follow and like to see be successful. So that was a big thing that we did. Um, you know, that was probably the biggest thing we did was, was establish the culture of our team and establish a, a solid fan base that hopefully can, um, you know, bring us to the promised land one day, which is what we're trying to do next conference. Let's move on to um, just... Uh guidance to any young Filipino Canadians that want to play ball. Uh, do you have anything to say about like maybe getting their citizenship? How, what's the process of them starting, you know, their journey to become a PBA player if, they, if they're seeing you as a role model, right? Do you recommend the dual citizenship of being Canadian and Filipino? You have to. You, it's, it's absolutely paramount for all the young kids out there, especially I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to help the kids who are like 13, 14, 15 right now because you guys are young enough to still get your passports. And not only that, but you guys can also get your recognition papers. So it's not enough just to have a Philippine passport. You have to get the second document, which is called recognition, your recognition papers, which proves that your parents were both Filipino citizens or one of your parents was a Filipino citizen at the time um, of your birth, which is very important. They won't let you play without that piece of paper. And a lot of guys have been um, screwed over because they, they get their passport, but they get it past the age of 18 or they don't have their recognition papers. So it's paramount. It's absolutely essential for you to get both. And um, I advise it to do as, as quickly as possible because I think the PBA is going to start being more lenient to letting Phil foreigners um, obtain that. So they're, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to ease up on some restrictions like people play because um, I think they're starting to realize that, you know, we're all Filipino. It doesn't matter if you're born in Australia, you're born in New Zealand, you're born in, in Scarborough, or you're born in, in, in Manila itself. You know, if you're Filipino, you're Filipino. If you have blood, you're Filipino. So, and you should be able to play. You shouldn't be punished um, and not be able to, to express yourself through basketball and play the game that you love because of, uh, you know, uh, a little loophole in the system. So that would be my advice for sure. You definitely have to get both those papers. Yeah. Yeah. I, do have, I do have some questions just regarding uh, since Christmas time is coming up what did you miss most about being in Canada and what are you looking forward to hearing for Christmas did you miss the snow did you miss the snow <laughs> <laughs> did you miss I the did. snow I, oh I you did actually did. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm sick of the I'm sick of hot weather I hate to be that kind of guy but it's 30 degrees every single day in the Philippines and you get tired of it man trust me you get sick of wearing shirts and shorts all day and <laughs> I'm a sweater guy. I'm an I'm a, I'm a autumn. Like, I like wearing, you know, bubble vest, jeans, and dressing up a little bit, and wearing a pea coat. So, you know, I was I was a real Toronto kid growing up. So I, I truly and genuinely miss the cold weather because 
I feel the cold humbles you and it makes you tougher. And you know, I feel like I'm getting a little soft out here. <laughs> <laughs> are, are there any uh, things that you're watching on, uh, you know, Netflix? You're, you're at home, you're quarantined, so you can't really do anything. So I what can't are you, even leave what this room, man. Like this, that's, that's why. You have the PS5? <laughs> just stuck in this, are you playing anything? I'm just in stuck this? in this tiny room right now. With, oh, with, darn. with a janky but, laptop, so. Yeah. No PS5 to keep you entertained or anything? Nah, man, no PS5. I, I I got the PS4 like six months ago, a year ago. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I watch a lot of basketball. Like I'm a I'm a basketball nerd. Like I recently I watched the 1976 NBA All Star Game, and it's just randomly for no reason. Like I'll watch all levels of basketball from like the Bill Lambeer teams to you know the Larry Browns and all that. Uh, Larry Bird. Um, I just watch basketball all damn day. And um, if I do just want to switch it up, you know, I'll go to Netflix and I'll watch the trailer park boys. Um, <laughs> you, know, just, just, you know, stupid shit. Uh, <laughs> trailer park boys, Brooklyn nine, nine, like, you know, just, just things to put in the background, you know, nothing too, nothing too serious. Um, yeah. I'm waiting for Ozark, the next Ozark. That's really about Oh, that's it. good. That's, yeah. good. that's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, speaking, speaking of which for uh, NBA, who did you look up to when you were growing up as a kid? Kobe Bryant. That Kobe was Bryant. it. That was, he was everything to me, man. And, you know, I, I still get emotional when I think about what happened to him. And, it's, you know, it's almost been a year already since um, his death. But he, I just want to, you know, like he, the way that, people mourned his death and, and the impact that he had on the game um, is going to be f immortal. He's going to be immortalized for what he did. And I think that's the true testament. Um, it wasn't even about his accolades. It was about his mentality, like that, just that mama mentality. Um, you know, that I feel like that's, that subject will be taught in university classes in the future. And, um, you know, he, he was bigger than basketball to me. And he just showed me that if you affect effect change and, and you inspire kids. Um, that's the true goal of being a basketball player. It's not to win championships and rings and have all the superficial, um, you know, objects, uh, but it's about inspiring the next kid to want to be the, you know, the next Matthew Wright or the next Kobe Bryant or whoever they want to be. Um, that's the true test of, of, um, of, you know, being legendary is, is to be, is to be inspiring, to be an icon to kids. So what do you want to be known for after your playing career is over, Matthew? Like, what do you pursue after that, probably, after, after this career? Or that too, yeah. I, yeah. I want so. to be, I still want to be involved in basketball, even after I hang it up. Um, so maybe, I, I think I'll be good in the, I don't know about co the coaching realm. I don't know if I have enough patience for that, but definitely the general managing section, you know, hiring, firing, trading guys. I feel like I'll be good in that. But, I've recently wanted to maybe start a Filipino league again in the Ooh. GTA. Um, you know, just like how we used to have with NPA and FIBA. I don't know if there's still leagues like that anymore, but um, I wanted to start one with Norbert and James and, and John Samira. Um, just, you know, have it back again. Um, you know, North York, Vaughn, Lacan, <laughs> you, know, you know, just redo the league and bring it back, make it better, better jerseys. This time will be, you know, cameras to film games. We have, we'll have better referees. We'll have better venues. Um, you know, just soup it up a bit. A lot, you know, a lot more from when we were growing up, which it was still good, but there's a lot of things that we can improve on. And, you know, maybe who knows, we'll be able to inspire or to cultivate the next Norbert, the next James, you know, um, the next Dean Labayan, like the legendary Filipinos who, um, you know, a lot of people don't know they need to be educated on. So, Hopefully like, we can inspire one of those guys to go out to PBA and, and represent for, you know, all Canadians out there. Mm, that's, that's so true. That's inspiring. Definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that everyone's kind of aligning their vision just for the, you know, the sport of basketball. Um, knowing that you are a father of two sons, let's say two of your sons decide they want to play basketball. What is your advice to them? Um, in order to become a good basketball player. It might, it might be different because you're talking to your sons, right? You might give them harsh truth. But, yeah. I mean, what is your advice if you want to cut through all the, you know, all the other coaches out there? What are you going to tell your two sons about basketball? I'm just going to tell them. I would have to try to teach them, you know, to have a killer instinct. That's definitely one. Um, but I guess most importantly, I would, I would just try to teach them how to love the game, like, organically. Um, you know, I wouldn't want them to play basketball just because they saw I 
saw me play and, and they know that I've, you know, I've had a career. So I think what's most important is to genuinely love the game and to develop a relationship with the game. So when things get hard, when you start losing, when you're not playing well, when if you're hurt, um, you're going to find that extra little bit of motivation and energy to push through it and keep playing, not because just strictly because you love the game that much and you want, you just generally want to be out there on the court. I think that's going to be the first thing that I would try to cultivate was, is just that love for the game. And because if you don't have that and the time and things get rough and, and the going gets tough, you know, I promise you a lot of people are going to crack and they, they you know, they're not going to, um, you know, they're going to give up. So I'll definitely teach them the love what it takes to genuinely love the game. And after that, I'll talk about work ethic and what it actually takes to be successful. Mm -hmm. I, I do have one. Uh, I know PJ touched upon it. And I, I have a strong feeling that um, it's something that, because knowing now how humble you are and how you came from such a challenging and, and, and inspiring beginnings, uh, when your playing career is over, what, like PJ mentioned, what do you want people to remember you by in terms of... Uh, your playing or your personality or your life, what is something that you want people to remember you by after your career is over as a player? Mm, I want, I want kids to see me as a philanthropist. Um, you know, I want kids to see me in their neighborhoods, shooting around with them. Um, you know, uh, you know, the guy who puts money down at half court and gives it to whoever the first kid to hit a half court shot. I want to be the kid. I want to be that guy uh, that they that they know, you know, was in, was in the was in the hood with them, too. And, um, you know, wasn't afraid of of, uh, you know, being in that position and and to give back. I just want to give back, um, you know, to the community. I, I just want to be one of those kind of guys um, to have that hood pass in my neighborhood, um, you know, uh, I want to be known as the guy who just believed in himself to, to make that big shot, that clutch shot. And, uh, you know, to, I just want to, I just want to teach uh, kids that it's okay to be a little bit cocky once in a while. Like it's, it's not all just about being, you know, like, you know, sometimes us, us Filipinos, we, we get too caught up in being my album. Like they all, oh, that's, that's my album. Don't do that. But like it was, <laughs> sometimes it's okay to have a it's little okay. bit of edge and, and um, confidence in your game. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. And yeah, that's definitely something I want to be known as. Someone who did did it the right way and, and did it his own way. Any last uh, questions for Matt? Oh, I mean, I was uh, hey. getting Coffee to know you. Was, uh, there. There you go. Yeah, Coffee getting to know you. I think people will um, get to know you for who you are. And I think that people will really appreciate it. And the kids that are watching, our show is mainly kids that watch. So... This is like a truly blessing uh, and an opportunity that you've given us. This is a blessing just for us to showcase kids that are watching a show. We've seen them when, when we go to basketball tournaments. Kids are coming and say, we watch your show. And for us to see that, hey, there's somebody here that is for the kids that actually had, had humble beginnings. This is an inspiring, truly legendary episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very, very yeah. Thank you, man. You're, uh, we've gone way uh, way over, over time. time but like you know I know you're hungry and everything what's for dinner <laughs> what's for dinner I, I made my mom give me some oxtail oh, <laughs> what's your favorite Filipino that's food that's what you that's wanted actually... to ask too favorite Filipino yeah, food top three yeah. what's oh, your favorite like dessert favorite Filipino and... food yeah. top three though I'm, I'm top Locano, three. so I like uh, I like papaitan papaitan oh. um, yeah uh, papaitan and um, any kind of just I'm a, I'm a fish guy like I, I like any kind of grilled fish um, I'm so I'm so fob now, man. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a dessert that like a Filipino dessert that you're like uh, toron or like? Bar Wait, do you eat with your you, do you eat with your hands now? Like you go come like full on kamayo? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah? Sure, right. kamayo. Yeah, I, when no one's looking, when no one's looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, Filipino word do you say the most? Oh man, I, it's I think a swear word. <laughs> it's probably it's, it's probably a swear word. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. But my Tagalog has definitely been a lot better. Like I can communicate on a whole another level that than I did when I first got there. So I'm speaking full sentences. I can, and that's because I have a lot of uh, teammates who don't speak English at all. So um, I thought, okay, you know what? I might as well learn Tagalog rather than than try to learn English. So. All right, man. Wait, thank you for thank you for thank joining you. us. Like I said, we went way longer than we thought, but we had such a fun time talking to you, getting to know you, and we hope you know if you decide to create a league here, you know, 
Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of help and support your way. Any shout outs you want to give just to, just to end? Anyone that you really want to shout out or uh, say to anyone that's watching? Uh, shout out to the boss, you know, Tito Ed. Um, you know, big time boss right there. Helps out a lot of kids. And if kids need any help, they should definitely get in contact with uh, Tito Ed Samira. He can, um, he can help you get to where you want to be. So uh, definitely shout out to Tito Ed and the whole Samira family. Mike, John, shout out to my boy, James Forrester, of course. You know, that's my guy right there, man. Like, you know, I wouldn't be successful in the Philippines if it weren't for him, man. He really laid the blueprint out for me. So definitely big shout out to James, AJ, man, Danny, you know, Jesus, uh, Dean, shout out to my boy, Dean, JP. Um, yeah, OG Filipinos right there, man. Real OG Filipino basketball players who I looked up to big time. So, um, you know, I had to pay homage. And for all the little kids out there, man, like sometimes I get your messages on Instagram. I might not reply to all of them, but, you know, I, I see it and I read it and I know you guys out there and, you know, I do it for you guys, man. I was just, I was like, you guys just wanted to make a name for myself, wanted to make a name for Toronto. Just wanted to put on for my city show, you know, the Filipinos that there's some hoopers out in Toronto. There really is. And, um, you know, we're one of the best in the world straight up. So believe in yourself man, and, and, and get over here, get your passport and your documents, your proper documents and, just dream big, man. That's it. There it is, man. Whoa. What a way to end it. Thanks, Matt, again. Thank you for your time. Go eat your oxtail. And uh, we'll, we'll be thinking of uh, naming that shot, man. Or uh, that one big shot, bro. You'll see it on our page. We'll call it something. <laughs> Name it up. Yeah, man. Help me, help me market it, man. It's going to be the next shot. It's going to be the next big <laughs> shot. Last signature. Go ahead and yeah. trademark it. That's it. Anything. That's it, man. Can't yeah. wait to see you, you, yeah. playing, uh, you, you playing again. And uh, we're rooting for you, man. You're making all the Filipino Canadians proud. Everyone from Toronto proud. And, man, it's been a, a, a blessing to be able to finally talk to you because you've been doing your thing for the last... Again, six years. So thanks for coming, yeah. in, coming in. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. I had fun today. Again, I'd like to thank Matthew for agreeing to this virtual interview. I know he's quarantined there, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hungry, too. I kind of want an oxtail as well. What are you guys thinking? <laughs> Yo, I'm thinking for some, like, oxtail curry curry, if anything. Yo, fried chicken. A double. <laughs> always for you. It's just always a chicken, man. <laughs> I like that he told us what he likes, you know. Like, just to get a side of him. Like, he said that, yeah, he's turning into a pub, but he's, he's embracing the culture of the Philippines. I mean, he's, he's always been involved with it ever since yeah. from since he was a baby up until he was a, a teen and everything, so... I guess it wasn't a huge culture shock. Yeah. I mean, he embraced by eating with his, with his yeah. kamai, so. <laughs> well, no one's looking. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed that special two-part series. Again, that's Matthew Wright, one of the highest levels of um, where you can reach as a basketball player. I hope all the kids watching uh, get inspired and, uh, and message him. He reads it, he said. So make sure we cheer on for, uh, for Matthew because he's representing Filipino ca uh, Canadians and Filipinos in the GTA. And you know, uh, that's all. So stay ballin', stay bouncing. Have a good time, guys. <laughs>